So please joining me in welcoming your commander and a really great soldier, Major General Arthur M. Bartell. Well, thank you, General Hickerson, for that uh, very, very kind int introduction. Uh, General P and distinguished guests, and most importantly, cadets, I want to welcome you to this year's George C. Marshall Awards Seminar. I've really been looking forward to this event and the opportunity to spend time at what is arguably the greatest assemblage of talented young men and women in, in the country. Cadets, go ahead and give yourselves a round of applause because you've certainly earned it. Cool. All right, um, uh, I'm now going to issue an order to the cadets present here this morning. It isn't an order that you'll find anywhere in FM 22-5, the Army's Drill and Ceremonies Manual. So I'll need each of you to pay close attention. On the count of three, quickly look to your left, and then immediately look to your right, and then return your head and eyes to the front. Ready? One, two, three. All right. With almost 100% certainty, I can tell you that during the last few seconds, you've seen at least a half a dozen future brigade commanders, several future division commanders, and perhaps at least one future chief of staff of the Army. Because assembled here are the best of the best. With quality at an all-time high, the fact that you cadets were selected to represent your academic institutions speaks volumes about your individual record of accomplishment. And those accomplishments are not limited to military subjects. Among your ranks are class presidents, fraternity and sorority leaders, athletes, and student government leaders. That fact, coupled with your impressive academic credentials, tells me that you have the intellect and the strength of character necessary to face the complexities of the world that you are about to enter. Because while you come from diverse backgrounds, clearly one common goal unites you, the desire to serve our nation and the passion to lead. As you stand on the threshold of that all-important rite of passage, taking the commissioning oath and becoming a lieutenant, I want to offer a few thoughts on what lies ahead of you. I will do that using the words of an individual who was in the preliminary stages of his campaign for the presidency when General Marshall was laid to rest in Arlington, President John F. Kennedy. Although nearly half a century has passed since President Kennedy shared these thoughts, they convey a challenge that is timeless. He said, and I quote, for those to whom much is given, much is required. And when at some future date, the high court of history sits in judgment on each of us, recording whether in our brief span of service we fulfilled our responsibilities to the state. Our success or failure in whatever office we hold will be measured by the answers to four questions. First, were we truly men of courage? Second, were we truly men of judgment? Third, were we truly men of integrity? And finally, were we truly men of dedication? Now, while President Kennedy may have only made specific reference to the male gender in those remarks, he nonetheless set a, set a clear azimuth for everyone who aspires to a position of leadership. And his remarks are particularly germane to those of us who follow the profession of arms. So in the days and years to come, I encourage you to keep those four key questions in mind. How you answer them will set the stage for your life, and your military career. At this critical time in our nation's history, a time of both great promise and significant uncertainty, you stand on the threshold of becoming officers in America's army. From all that I know of you, I am certain that each of you is up to that challenge. The next several days will provide you some tremendous opportunities. You will have access to some of the senior leadership of the army, and you will exchange ideas on some of the most important geopolitical topics of the day with world-class experts. 
leaders of the caliber of the Secretary of the Army, the Chief of Staff of the Army, and the Commanding General of the Training and Doctrine Command have cleared their calendars and will travel here for one reason, and that reason is you, because you represent the future of the Army. So in closing, I want to extend my thanks to the staff of the Marshall Foundation, the Virginia Military Institute, and Washington and Lee University, whose collective efforts have made this extraordinary event possible. I look forward to meeting and speaking with you in the days ahead. So let's have a great conference. Start strong, Army strong. Thank you very much.